to Motrin. So ask your doctor about that. The other thing is that's really critical is, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a big deal uh, to get your body fluids going again. And I told you about the catheter and the peeing and all that stuff. Well, <clears throat> the other one you can't forget about um, is poop. Uh, they, they will ask you from the second you wake up, you know, do you need to go to the bathroom? They want to see you fart and they want to see you have a bowel movement. Um, Got to get your body functions together. So constipation is a big issue. Painkillers contribute to significant constipation. So every time that you take a painkiller, they're going to give you a stool softener, right? So uh, what's this? Coal right, right? Nothing you can buy it right over the counter. So um, the stool softener, uh, every time I take a painkiller at two hours and 12 hours, <clears throat> I take a uh, a stool softener. So it was a big effort for me. Um, thanks for sharing, Paul. Um, to take a poo at the hospital and you're gonna have the same problem. You're not gonna just wake up and go, I have to go to the bathroom. So they have a number of uh, uh, options for you. You're probably not gonna be able to do it on your own. I ended up, because it was just, I was so bloated, I ended up taking a suppository at like one in the morning and it was a four hour process. By the time they stuck that up my rear end and I sat there and just waited and waited and waited and uh, you know, oh my God, wh what a relief by the time you go to the bathroom. But you gotta get your bowels moving again. So um, I, I still was constipated when I left the hospital. I think it took three days before I had a bowel movement. I think I, uh, or four days, uh, I got home. I still didn't have a bowel, bowel movement for the three days before. And I'm gonna give you a tip that I found out about. I called the doctor, can't go to the bathroom, I'm bloated like a dog. And he said, okay, go out, go to the store and get some, uh, what was it called, Cena. Um, it's, an, it's an herb, I thought it was like something prescription. Anyway, before you go into the operation, get this stuff, it's called Smooth Move. That's what it is, Cena, okay? It helps you poop uh, and it's a tea and you will need this when you get home, guaranteed. Don't sit there and try and figure this out. So um, some extra things that you know, you're gonna need are the Cena, you're gonna need the, um, that's the Smooth Move tea, you're gonna need the combination of the, uh, what did I say, Tylenol and, and Motrin. Um, and then the other thing I would tell you is get a clear glass. Okay, that's my pill glass. So seven in the morning, grogged up, you're hurting. As you take each pill, I take the pill and I take the pill, I unscrew it and I put the pill in the glass. And then I move this one forward, I unscrew this, put the pill in the glass. You can check off on your list as you do it, but all my pills go in the clear glass <clears throat> for whatever pill cycle I'm on. Then I have a glass of water and I drink them all at once, right? You're not gonna sit there and take one pill, drink one pill, drink, right? So anyway, that's the way I did it. So let me show you a few other uh, interesting things here. So you're worried about, you know, how you're going to get, oh, I'm going to, I'll, I'll show you a bunch of things. So how you're going to get around when you get, get at home, um, you just need to figure it out. I don't know if your house has got 20 stairs or two or 10 or five, but in my house here, I have one or two stairs that go down into my little family room and, oh, excuse me, and you can see my railing that's here. And uh, I would tell you for definitely the first three days, this is for me, I'm 59, I'm in pretty decent shape. For the first three days, you definitely need someone here to help wet nurse you. And I don't mean to wipe your rear end, but help you get up, get stuff for you. Uh, you're hurting, okay? And let me tell you something that I read about and I couldn't get a clear indication from anybody. Personal experience, I would tell you this in a heartbeat. Uh, a friend, uh, you know, whether or not you've seen these stand-up chairs here, you know, these recliner things that um, are electric and it's got an electric cord over here and it goes all the way back and it also stands you up. One of the most painful parts, especially for the first two or three days, is trying to get up because you can't use your arms, you have to use your leg muscles only and anything that puts tension on your chest, it hurts badly. Um, Absolutely unequivocally, I'd tell you to get one of these. It makes all the difference in the world. And I'd say out of the first <clears throat> four nights at home or five nights, I spent two, two and a half nights in this thing as I read other people did when they you know, were 
going through this online here, I don't really know what I would have done if I didn't have this to go to and an ability to get myself stood up because you don't want your, you know, gracious family members yanking at you while you're in deep pain. It's a lot easier to have this thing come up. Plus, a lot of people have a great discomfort, as I did uh, for several nights, of actually sleeping in the bed. And I came out to, to this, and I just put the recliner up electronically, and it did its job. And the other thing you can see, I had a table on the left and a table on the right, and uh, that's all I need. I thought I might need one of those swinging hospital things, whatever, but a table on either side so you can reach it with your arms, keep all your paraphernalia, your water, your this, your that. Uh, one of my good friends thought he'd be very helpful and oh, bring over a device here. I'll let you cheer it. Lovely. Um, so that was supposed to summon my family members. That was obviously a joke. And then the other thing is they... Uh, you're probably going to get one of these. I call it the flutter machine. They give you that in the hospital. They want to get your lungs working again. Um, then there's this other contraption. I forgot what they call it, the incentive meter or something like that. Right, here you go. Whole idea is to get your lungs moving uh, again. So the second you wake up, they're going to be having you to try and use these devices because they got to get your lungs going again. Um, so anyway, those toys are all part of the, the toy contraption here. Now, let me show you something else. And I just want to give you uh, a little bit of encouragement. I'm walking slowly. And uh, this is my side door. And... I believe the day that I came home, I'm going to tell you this, the day that I came home, okay, so I've got one, two stairs uh, to go down. I just had, whether my daughter or my wife or whatever, and they would stand right there and hold, and I was able to see if I can do it right now very carefully. I'm still having a little trouble walking, um, and I'm going to go down to the next one. I shouldn't be doing this by myself, but I'm trying to make this video for you people. Okay, so... Uh, the day that I came home, granted I looked like death warmed over, and I felt like it, but it was just a determination thing. I'm gonna shock you with this. I was able to walk, this is with my daughter holding my arm, out my driveway, and Lulu came with us, and I was able to walk out the uh, driveway and I was able to walk down to the end of my block. That's a pretty good walk. And I walked there, and I walked all the way back, and walked back in. And I think on the second day home, I did two or three of those. And each day now, I've done two to four little laps, as they call them. Come here, Lulu, back in, please. Come on, Lulu, inside, come on, inside, come on. Lulu, inside, sorry, come on, Lulu. It's my friendly, faithful dog. Um, so, uh, here's the bottom line. Shocking how fast you'll be moving. I'm blown away. All right, so it'll work out. It's just a very freaky head trip. There's no, oh, oh, no doubt about it. Okay, so um, I want to show you one other very hot tip. And it took me a bit to figure it out. Um, oh, I'm puffing a little bit. Sienna, could you come here? I want to have you hold the camera for one second, please, while it's on. You got to put the food down. I'm going to show you something. Here, could you get my heart pillow here, please? The hardest thing that you're going to have is sitting down and standing up from a chair, and the one that is absolute killer for the first, you know, in the hospital, and first number of days is getting in and out of your bed. And all I can tell you is you'll figure that out. Uh, can you turn down that TV? Yeah. You know how to turn that down? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, this isn't a scripted video. Um, you just put it on mute or something? Okay, so what I want to show is all the way down? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Thank you. So I want to show you something here. This is the other thing. Um, you've seen a few little toys that I told you to get. The other thing you absolutely want to get, don't let anybody tell you anything different, buy one of these wedge pillows. You can get it at Bed Bath Beyond, Brookstone, 35 bucks, piece of cake. And you see my double stack of pillows here. Now, what I want to show you is, I want to show you a technique that will dramatically improve your life quickly. And it was thanks to a physical therapist at the hospital. Okay, so I'm moving better than you're gonna move because I'm three, four, five days out of it. Now, what you're supposed to do is come over here, let me get over here, and you're in deep pain. And you're very, very cautious about everything. And in order to lie down, you're supposed to come over here, put compression on your chest to help contain the pain, and you're gonna come over here and you're gonna lean over like that, and you're gonna work your legs up over like that. Okay, it still hurts, but I can tell you this, right there to do that, you're gonna need help. Now, can you come a little closer? So, here's the thing that they tell you. You can't use your hands, because if you use your hands, you're putting pressure on your sternum and your chest. Well, here's a tip that I got. You have to, at some point, use your arms a little bit, and the only way you're gonna do it is not hug the pillow. And you're gonna go, oops, they told me to always hug the pillow. Well, here's what I found out. <clears throat> Getting up out of bed, okay? I get rid of the pillow, and I call it the cat's paw move. Look at where my elbow is. See my elbow? Okay, so you get your elbow, pressure on the bed. Then your other hand is here. And what you do is, I slowly get my one leg coming over here, and I lower it down, oh, it hurts, and I'm pushing with my elbow, and I'm pushing with my hand at the same time. Ah. Okay, so it still hurts. That's the way you're gonna get out of bed, the least amount of pain. You can't do it holding the pillow. So that's the cat's paw move. That's another big one that you got from me that uh, won't cost you a nickel, but you're gonna say, wow, thanks Paul for giving me that. Okay, so that was my daughter Sienna who helped me. That's my lovely wife Janet. Everybody wants to be on film here as you can see. Um, so you're getting, I'm breathing a little bit, but I'm okay. Uh, so I'm trying to think if there's, oh, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough here on the, uh, Aaron got some nice balloons from my mom. Neighbors brought over lots of hot food. Family members did. Now, let me show you. Uh, oh, something else here. Let me clear some of this stuff out. As you've seen all this paraphernalia. Okay, now, I'm gonna show you this. All right, let me catch my breath. I really am fine. It's just, you know, everything takes a little extra effort right now. So, you gotta have a little fun along the way. I tried to joke as much as I could. It's my way of getting rid of the nervous energy. So, my dear friend Cindy brought me in the hospital a book of farts, okay? Farting's a big thing when you're in the hospital. You gotta do it, get your body going. So, the book of farts, I'm not gonna go through it all. The seismic blast, the silent but deadly, the blowing smoke, but here's the fun part, okay? So, here, listen. You push the button. That's a pretty good one, huh? And here's another one. Ooh. Ooh. get the idea it's pretty good so what I did with the fart book I had a great idea we got all these lovely nurses and their assistants coming in I was able to get them I got about five or six of the nurses this way I'm laid in the bed laid out like a dead dog and I get the fart book and I put it over on my right side underneath the blanket and then I get the nurse to come over and I go oh I got a pain right here in my side something's making a noise 
can you put the stethoscope there and see what's happening? Oh my God, I got them to do it. And when they put the stethoscope there, I had my finger on the button. Every one of them, they lurched back two or three feet. They didn't know what the hell hit them. I, I, I had to stop doing it because the laughing caused so much pain. I'll show you a picture. So my point is, have a little, have a little bit of fun, uh, you know, as much as you can in doing this. Um, I'm going to show you probably more than you want to see, but it doesn't bother me, and we've gotten this far. So this is a picture of the uh, inside of my heart, and it uh, probably doesn't mean much to you now, but this is actually the, uh, uh, the nasty uh, aortic valve. Those are the horrible pieces they cut out. Um, this here is the putting in the new aortic valve. This is... Um, uh, uh, the completed job where they put in the, the graft of and, and the arched aorta. I'll show you another picture. So that's a, a very nice piece. That's what you look like when they've got you opened up. <clears throat> they get a big pair of uh, stainless steel clamps that have you pulled apart, and that's how they get access to you. Sorry if this grosses you out. It doesn't really bother me. Um, <clears throat> and this is a picture of the aorta. So the heart's down here. This is the ascending aorta. This is the arched aorta. My job was replace the aortic valve. I had to have this part replaced. That's the uh, ascending aorta. And they also had to do this arched aorta. I, I talked about that before. So I had kind of a, a three-part job there. There's another view of it here. That's the arched aorta. And I think they call this a peninsula cut. Um, the way they do this and they graph the whole thing and it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, you know, more of the same. Oh, there I believe is uh, my aorta, not mine, but an aorta all fat and swollen up with the aneurysm. That's in concept what mine look like, you know, have, can, you know, burst at any second. Um, so let's go through this, give you a little bit of human perspective. <clears throat> there's, there's my wife. There I am. There's my heart pillow. Lovely. Um, there I am in the uh, pre-op there waiting, playing around, nervous energy. I got one of the little rubber gloves you blow up. I couldn't think of anything else to do. Um, oh, same one. Then here I am in ICU. So check it out. Um, it's one of the ICU nurses. You've never seen so many damn tubes and pieces of equipment and monitors and everything else in here, but you're there, you're alive, and very competent people, you know, managing the whole deal. But, you know, there it is, okay? Um, there's the one that nobody wants to see. This